Hello there, my friends. It is Jessica from I Read to Relax uh, here, and also I am I Read to Relax on Instagram or Bookstagram, whichever you'd like to call it. Um, anyway, so I don't know if you all know, uh, there is a paper shortage right now, and it is affecting the book publishing industry. And what that means is that if you are somebody who thinks about buying books for people for Christmas or their birthdays or anything that's coming up in the next couple of months, you are going to want to try and get a hold of those physical books as soon as possible um, because the shortage means that they are currently pausing a lot of printing. So there are books that were set to be published over the next few months that have been pushed back a few months and won't actually come out until later in the spring 2022. Um, and the books that were set to be published now um, are being printed but in smaller quantities and when those actual physical books run out they're not going to be able to reprint them on demand right away. Like I said, what that means is basically what stock is available out there now is what's going to be available for Christmas, for birthdays, for the next few months. Um, it's going to be harder to get hold of physical books. Um, so if you have a book lover in your life, we'll be honest, book lovers, uh, you know, book gift cards are always loved because then they can go and hunt for their own titles. Um, but if you like to give a physical book, you're going to want to start looking now. So knowing that, what I decided to do today is to start a series of videos that is going to be suggestions of books that would make amazing Christmas or whatever gifts. Said I just have a couple of titles to share with you today. Um, and I'm going to try and make my next couple of videos suggestions of potential book gift ideas and either that'll inspire you or you can just listen to why I like the books and maybe read them yourself, whatever you want to do with it. But if you do need to go book shopping, this can help you get started now. Uh, a lot of hardcore book lovers in your life most likely will tell you exactly what books they want you to get for them because um, if they're like me, I read probably between 150 and 175 books a year. So by the time somebody thinks of a book for me, there's a possibility that I've already read it. Um, so I always try to furnish an actual list of books that I'm looking forward to or books that I borrowed and read and now would like to own a copy of. Um, but there's nothing more appreciated than somebody who tries, like who listens to what I like and then gives me something based on that anyway. So even if I have read it, the, the thought is still so amazing, the thought that went behind it. So I would just caution you if you have a big reader in your life and you give them a physical book, save the gift receipt so they can exchange if it turns out that they already own it. But those are just logistics. Let's talk about why some of these books would be amazing choices. So the first book that I have to share with you today is Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. And this is the first book in the His Fair Assassins trilogy. There are three books in this original trilogy, and then Robin Lefevers has come out with a duology, so two more books set in the same world, but not directly the same story as these three. So there's actually five books set in this world. And what I think is really appealing about this world is this is set in the 12th century um, in real history. So it's historical fiction, but there's a fantasy twist. So um, if you have somebody in your life who loves, who like grew up reading King Arthur stories, you know, the sword and the stone and those types of historical fiction fantasies, this would be really appealing. And it's about assassin nuns. <laughs> okay, like, so 
that's the hook for this series. It is assassin nuns. So these are women um, who belong to a uh, coven, covenant, coven. What is the word for a place that nuns go? Convent, a coven. They're not witches. They're, it's not a coven of witches. They belong to a convent um, that trains them um, to be involved in the court politics of the time. And they are, um, they are servants of the god of death. And so each of the books, each of the first three features one of the different nuns and a mission that she is sent on. And there's a small element of romance, but it is not really, really the focus of the book. Um, so like I said, it's medieval times, there's court politics involved, and they're trained assassins. So like one of them specializes in poisons. So there's discussion about a lot of poisons. And then one is an archer and they all know how to fight. And it's just, they are extremely well written. Um, there's a lot of detail of the period and it's just a really fun concept like assassin nuns. Who doesn't love that? So like I said, Grave Mercy is the first book. Um, they were reissued in the last couple of years with these gorgeous um, paperback editions with the new covers. So um, they're beautiful to look at as well. But um, those are really fantastic. So I love that series. Highly recommend it. Um, if you have somebody in your life who loves more high fantasy, think Lord of the Rings, that type of um, world. The Graceling Realm novels are fantastic. So the first book is Kristen Kishore's Graceling. And this is a fantasy world where um, there are people who have special abilities. Um, they have two different color eyes that uh, lets everybody know that they have some sort of special ability and it can be anything. So you could have a Graceling who's a baker and they can bake anything. Um, no recipe needed. They just know how to do it. Um, you could have somebody who's an archer and they would be able to hit whatever they aimed at every single time. So the Gracelings are very coveted, obviously, because they have these unique gifts. And uh, Katza is the main character, and she is the niece of the king in their kingdom. And unfortunately, when the king discovers that her Graceling is uh, killing, she is forced to be his, like, trained assassin. Um, he sends her out basically to intimidate and bully people into doing what he wants. So, um, Katza ends up meeting another person, Poe, and, um, it sort of spurs her to take her fate into her own hands. And so, like I said, it's a really rich fantasy world is very well done. There are four books in the series now. So there's Graceling, uh, Fire, Bitter Blue, and Winterkeep. They all surround a different main character at different points and they're all related but you can also read them individually and they're all fantastic. Um, they're all so well done. So Graceling would be another one I would recommend. Um, if you have somebody in your life that likes what is known as urban fantasy, and if you don't know what urban fantasy is, urban fantasy is books that are set in our contemporary modern world, but with fantasy elements. So 
they're usually in bigger cities and there are, you know, werewolves or vampires or just people with magical abilities. If you have a reader in your life that really enjoys that type of fantasy where the world itself is completely relatable and then there's just this magic element dropped into it. Um, this is a series that was just started not too long ago and their the fourth book comes out next week. Um, and they are fantastic. Again, this is one of the best urban fantasy series I've come across in a long time. Um, this is set in England. Glimmer of the Other is the first book and it's the Other Realm series by Heather G. Harris. Um, the main character, whose name happens to be Jessica, which is another cute little reason I love it, but um, Jessica Sharp is a private investigator and is desperately trying not only to make her own way in the world, um, you know, make a living. <laughs> <laughs> um, being a private investigator and she's good at it. Um, but her parents were murdered five years earlier. And so there's always this part of her that's trying to figure out what, what really happened, why it happened, who did it. Um, so that's sort of the overarching mystery going on in the background. And then each of the books has obviously its own mystery that's happening. Um, and let's see how to get into this without giving too much away. So one of the elements that makes Jessica Jess a fantastic private investigator is she has a really, really amazing ability to tell when people are lying. Um, people can say something and she just automatically knows if it was a lie or not. Um, she has this really amazing, um, Great Dane who turns out to be maybe not a Great Dane, but Gato, and yes, that does mean cat in Spanish. Um, it's a very ironic name. Um, Gato is like the best side character ever. She's got an amazing best friend sidekick, um, there's just so many great elements to this. And then to not get into too much that would spoil things, but it turns out that there is a whole second world um, of magic that sort of overlays ours that she ends up finding out about. So there are wizards and there are dragons and there are werewolves and all of those things and she suddenly has to figure out how to deal with knowing about them and what that means for her life and the lives of everyone else around her. Um, so again, these are fantastic. I love the main character. She's a, um, very smart, very level-headed, like she doesn't panic. She figures out the smart way to do things. She's just a very solid character. Um, so I highly recommend this series if you like that type of book or if you have a friend that you're looking for a book and you know they like to read that kind of thing. Um, like I was saying, if you watch TV shows, they did The Dresden Files, which is an urban fantasy. Um, the Mortal Instruments is an urban fantasy. Um, Bitten, the TV show which had werewolves, is an urban fantasy. Um, so again, anything that has that sort of our modern world with things that don't actually exist in it. The last book that I'm going to share with you today is a book that has a really special place in my heart. Um, this is a book that I read last year and recommended people get for gifts last year. I'm going to recommend it again this year because it's one of my top books of all time now. Um, this book is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. And I will just say up front... It does have a same-sex love relationship. So if there are people in your life who are uncomfortable with gay relationships, this is not the book for them. Um, if you have somebody who does not have a problem with that, this is an amazing, amazing book. 
So it's also extreme fantasy, so people need to be prepared for that. But outside of those elements, this book is just one of the most amazing found family stories I have ever read. Um, the story is set in a world where there are um, people that have special abilities. Um, it's also a world where there is this system of terrible, terrible orphanages, like actual homes for orphans, and they are just terrible. So the main character, Linus, um, works for the British equivalent of like Child and Protective Services. And his job is to go and inspect these orphan homes and decide whether or not they're okay to continue functioning or they need to be shut down. It's horrible. He feels like he's doing a good job, but he also hates it. Like it's, it's just not a nice job. And, and he doesn't know how to change his life, but he knows he's not happy. So then he gets sent on this assignment to go check out this orphanage that they're planning to shut down because he's told that the kids there are uncontrollable and it's dangerous and that for everyone's safety, it just needs to be shut down. When he goes to this orphan home, he finds this wonderful group of kids who have all been placed there because they are so different from everyone and each other that nobody knew what else to do with them but they've since become their own little family. And they are all so, I'm gonna start crying. Oh my. They are all so amazing individually and as a group that he falls in love with them. How can you not love that kind of story? So anyway, they are overseen by this gentleman who is just utterly confusing to Linus. Um, but the longer he gets to know their caretaker and the kids themselves, the longer he, like the more he realizes how awful his regular life has been and how lonely he is. And when their home is really truly threatened, like they're gonna get rid of it and all these kids are just gonna be homeless, um, he decides to fight for them. And this is just a beautiful book that feels like you are just wrapped in this warm hug. Like the, the love and affection and heartbreaking beautifulness of this book is just overwhelming. And so this book is something that I haven't met anybody who's read that has not felt that way about it. So if you know somebody that needs a little pick me up and they happen to like fantasy, this book is an amazing gift. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Like it's, like I said, it's one of my all time favorite books now. So those are oh my God, the four books that I wanted to recommend as um, great gift ideas for this upcoming season. Um, they are all, as I mentioned, books that have been out for a little bit. So there should be copies available. Um, but like I've also said, with the paper shortage and how that's affecting supply, like I would not hesitate if you think there's a book you want to buy for somebody, like don't wait till the week before you want to give it to them um, because it may not be available. So do your shopping now um, or again, gift cards for your hardcore reader friends because they'll appreciate being able to pick out their own, you know, books. But, um, 
I will come back next week with some other potential suggestions and uh, happy, happy gift giving. All right. I will see you next time. Um, I hope you are reading something amazing today.